and welcome to what is this episode six of kiddo diddo yeah episode six of the kiddo diddo crafts podcast <sighs> my name is kira um i live in northern california in chico with my husband and two cats and i am a knitter crocheter painter maker crafty person in general and this is my podcast where um, I review the stuff I've been working on. So um, welcome back to the friends and family who tune in um, to every episode. I really appreciate the views. Um, I love that you guys are enjoying it. Um, the windows are open in here and the cats are excited about that. So you might hear them murmuring. Uh, William Blake has been on a tear. I'll talk about that more later. So, um, yeah. Sorry, I just ate some oatmeal. I'm using my bowl cozy. I use it a lot. Um, so, if I'm like being weird and picking oatmeal out of my teeth, <laughs> that's what that is. I'm drinking um, some Marionberry tea that my friend Laura gave me um, on a trip down here. She lives in Oregon right now, so Marion Berries are a big deal up there. The tea is so good. I love it. Um, I'm sneaking in uh, an episode on the very last day of February here. Probably won't post till tomorrow, um, but yeah, it's Sunday, February 28th, 2021. Um, this month has been crazy for me in my personal family life. Um, I won't go into a lot of details, but various hospitalizations, mental and physical health issues, um, just it's been a lot. And I have, haven't really felt like I had the emotional or any energy really to put into recording an episode. Not that this is like exhausting or anything, but it does require some headspace that I just <clears throat> didn't have at my disposal this month. So, but I'm here now. Um, also, the last three weeks, I was only working on two projects and it just felt like I wasn't making any progress on those two projects. Um, they're both fingering weight, large projects. I've talked about them in the past. I'll get to them anyway. But in this last week, I just was like, I can't, I can't, ha I can't do the fingering weight anymore. So um, I whipped out a sweater for my cat and two hats. <laughs> so yeah, now I have some things to share with you, which is exciting. That's the other thing. It's like, if you don't have any finished objects, not that I can't record a podcast episode because this is my podcast and I do what I want, but um having things to share definitely like motivates me in wanting to uh have an episode so yeah that's that's what's been going on i hope that your february has gone better than mine um i'm looking forward to march march is uh, my husband's birth month so that'll be fun and then april is mine so i've got birthdays coming up and um yeah spring seems to have sprung early here in california northern california actually I'm actually in shorts and this thick <laughs> bare aisle worsted weight cowl uh, kind of a joke I'm definitely not gonna wear it for the rest of the day but um, uh, I guess that's a good good time to transition into what I'm wearing this is the sickest cowl I believe is the pronunciation on that it is a beautiful pattern by Jennifer Berg she actually um, accepted me to test knit um, her, um, what's it called, sheep something sweater. It's a gorgeous pattern. I'm totally going to buy it when it comes out. And then I had all this family stuff come up, so I had to bow out of that, which was hard. I don't like committing to things and then having to back out of things. It's No one likes doing that. So, um, yeah, but I love her designs, and um, I made this over Christmas. I don't think I've, I've shared the finished thing here, but I haven't worn it here. So, um, anyway, 
I love it. It's very warm and cozy. Oh, and then I'm also wearing my moon earrings. These are by Dagnabbit Designs. You can find her on um, Instagram for sure, and I think she's on Etsy. Um, I've got several pieces of hers. Um, she's based in Richmond, Virginia. So that's what I'm wearing today. Um, and as far as finished objects, last time um, on my crochet kick, I showed this a, uh, as a work in progress. This is the Winter Opulence Round Hot Pad. Um, mine definitely came out kind of wonky. It doesn't lie super flat. I did block it. There's, there's totally mistakes and issues with this. Um, but I think it's super fun and it's really pretty and I hang it on my kitchen wall. Um, I haven't used it yet, but I totally should. Even though there's junk in it. Okay, so Winter Opulence Round Hot Pad. Um, it's a free pattern by Kristen Holloway. You can find it on her website. Um, and I would like to do more crochet doily type things in the future. This one's... Um, a functional thing you're supposed to be able to use it for um, as a hot pad so there's that um, a couple of hats I'll show um, I've been having some issues with my hat gauge like they keep coming out huge I'm not totally sure why <laughs> this is the quill I do know why I think I'm using too large of needles um, so I, I my lack of swatching is biting me um, this is Quill by Andrew Mowry. I have the brim folded up because it just fits me better that way. But you can just see how giant it is. Um, anyway, it's got a nice texture. I used um, Busilla Tapestry Wool, um, which I got at a thrift store. Um, and yeah, with it, with it folded up, the brim folded up, it's not not bad at all. So um, there's that hat. And then um, I made another, so like a year ago, Andrew Mowry was having a sale and I just bought a bunch of her patterns. So I'm trying to kind of nip through some of those. So these are the two hat patterns I bought from her. And this is the Rudebeckia, Rudbeckia hat um, by Andrew Mowry. This one I made the size small and it fits me loads better. So there's that. And this is using Knit Picks Amethyst Heather, that's the purple. And then the kind of greeny bluey gray is Mockingbird Breast by Robin's Promise. So um, yeah, this was really fun to knit. I really like the texture um, that you can kind of see the Knit Picks doesn't have great st stitch definition, but you can see it's um, kind of got like a twist on the brim as opposed to just a straight one by one rib or two by two or whatever. This is a two by two rib, but it's it's got that diagonal to it. So, oh, by the way, I did my hair. <laughs> um, I am trying out Madison Reed this time um, and I like it. Um, I needed a change from all the crazy colors because they're kind of a little high maintenance and this I'm hoping will obviously like the bleached part of my hair I might have to keep touching up but I really like how it turned my roots red and everything so then I got a trim too so throwing it out see how long that lasts um, but anyway Rudbeckia never have too many hats Um, my last finished object is the sweater that I made for my cat that I referred to earlier. So William Blake, he's the black one who sometimes drapes himself behind me. He and I have a dysfunctional relationship. Those of you who are familiar with Arrested Development and Lucille and Buster Bluth's relationship, that might give you some indication <laughs> of uh, he and I's relationship. 
he follows me around the house constantly, he whines at me constantly, and I in turn am withholding and um, verbally abusive to him. So <laughs> he's a cat. He can't understand English. I wish he could because then maybe he'd listen to me. But anyway, I made him a sweater. It says turd because that's what I call him because that's what he is. It also has a heart on it because I do love him. <laughs> uh, I'll put in some pictures of him in his turd sweater right here. Anyway, I think it's pretty cute. I did this in one evening. Um, I used the Dapper Blue Cat Sweater, which is a, it's a pretty cheap pattern. It's only like a dollar or two um, on Ravelry. And um, I used, this is Wonderland Fibers, I think. I don't remember what the colorway is. And then a bunch of, I think this is like just a lot of Cascade and Knit Picks um, for the color work. And I did my own chart, kind of based it on some color work that I liked. Um, I used, oh, I'll share that. I used my Vogue Knitting color work paper. So there's the chart. You can see um, I was kind of messing around with some different things and I had to offset this and anyway, it wasn't too hard to figure out, but there it is. Um, so that's officially my the first sweater I've ever designed <laughs> was my stupid cat sweater. <laughs> um, but it was super fun. I needed it. It was a great little stress relief to just whip this out in an evening. Um, yeah, and he hates it. <laughs> Which means I love it. So yeah, those are my uh, few little finished objects. I do have... Um, to steal a, a phrase from the Knit More Girls, I do have a knitting attacks. So the sweater that I wore in, I think, the first episode ever, which was the Agatha sweater by Andy Satterland, went through the wash. Um, I got confused as to whether I had used a super wash or not on this and the the cascade I used was not super wash so it felted um, the lace is basically gone you can kind of see it I actually haven't tried it on nah, that's not gonna work maybe if I don't have a shirt on I can maybe squeeze into it um, but I'm I yeah it this happened over a month ago, so I forgot to mention it in the last episode, um, but I definitely may have cried a little bit about it because <laughs> I love this sweater and um, I was it was my first lace project and I was really proud of it and now it's felted. Um, but I've since gotten over it. I'm going to salvage the buttons. Um, I'm going to make another one. I'll probably use a slightly different um, yarn. Same company, I think this was Cascade, so I'll do I'll do another one in Cascade. But um, I I know for my next one, I want to make the sleeves a little shorter. Um, I might make it a size down since um, I have been reducing my personal equity to steal another uh, phrase from uh, the Knit More Girls. Um, but I'll use the same buttons, which I just love these buttons. They are super cool. I got them on Amazon. Um, so yeah, pay attention when you're washing your knitted garments, whether or not they are super wash. <laughs> Since then, um, I've been just hand washing everything because I don't want a repeat disaster like this one to occur. So there's a lot you can do with felted wool. I, I might use the sleeves to make, um, little soap, uh, cozies, um, little soap scrubbies, you know, um, does that make any sense? You stick a bar of soap in there, you sew up the ends, and then it like suds up and it's a scrubby. So um, that's something you can do with it. Felted slippers would be really nice, just sewn up. Um, and it's it still has some 
but there's obviously there's texture in it you just can't like the lace is totally closed up now but there's still some cool texture so I'm sure I'll find something to do with it um but yeah this would happen to everyone at some point <laughs> and now it's happened to me I remember when Mars on Hey Brownberry um felted one of her color work sweaters and I was like Mars what like how could you do that? You put, like, you know better, and here I am. She accidentally threw hers in the wash, or someone in her family did. I did it on purpose. So I have even less of a leg to stand on. <sighs> this is what, this is what happens. Don't judge, lest you be judged. <laughs> um, let's talk about some whips. Let me pull these out here. So, I have, um, let's talk about my Sapilla. So, last episode I talked about how I ripped it out because I wasn't really quite happy with how the color work had turned out. And I saw in knitting a sleeve um, that there was a much higher contrast with some of the different yarn balls that I had uh, purchased from Fiber for the People. And I was much happier with how that looked. I wanted that to be what the yoke looked like. So, um, and then there were there were a couple other issues. There was some pooling and stuff I wasn't crazy about. So I ripped the whole thing out after about three weeks of work. And I've now been working on it for about a month and I'm back to the point it was and beyond. So, and I'm much happier with it. Um, I'm even doing some waist shaping. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is what it looks like. Um, I might put a comparison shot in here so you can see what the difference is with the contrast. It's still subtle, still pretty subtle on that color work, but you can see pretty much all of the designs in it, so they're not all lost. So this is the Sapilla by Caitlin Hunter. Um, I'm knitting it out of um, Titan. Titan is the green, and wood sugar is the gold um, in Fiber for the People's Fingering 4-ply. Um, it's her Merino Nylon 4-ply. So it's a, it's a gorgeous yarn. I'm really enjoying working with it. And then you can see there is some pooling happening. I'm trying to alternate skeins a little more, um, but it's not like it was. I'll, I'll put a picture in here of the pooling where you could see like parallelograms of, of color that was a little distracting so this is a lot better <laughs> um i'm working like i said i'm putting in some waist shaping um and now working on increases back out to um cover my ample hips so and then it'll be sleeves and then it'll be done so this is um A labor of love it's a labor <laughs> I'm, I'm discovered I'm not a fan of fingering weight sweaters I might love it once it's on and forget like you know like a lot of people do with knitting and hobbies and children and childbirth you forget how awful it is and then you start another one so um, but yeah right now the fingering weight sweater not my favorite. I think I'm gonna love the end result. I'm gonna be glad I did it, but it'll be a while before I take on another one of those. So the other project I've been working very diligently on that feels like it's just eternity forever and ever is my shoe sweet shrug. Shoe sweet. Suzanne Sommer um, wrote an amazing pattern. This pattern is great to work from. Um, there's a really great um, tutorial on how to get it started, which is awesome, because it is very fiddly at the beginning, but once you get it down, it's just almost too boring. <laughs> Not really. I just don't like giant fingering weight projects, apparently. Um, just don't have the patience. And, of course, here I am mid-row. But um, this is the Shoe Sweetie Shrug so far. Why did I not finish this row? So um, it's upside down. Yeah. 
So this is the back of it. And then these are the sleeves. And then it comes down. This is where um, I'm about to separate for the sleeves. I'm really close. So then this will be like a sweater sleeve separation here. And then this is the front panel. So I'll put a picture in here so you can see what it's what the end result is going to be. But anyway, it's I, I like how it's turning out. I love brioche. Looks really cool on the other side too. I think it's going to be reversible. Um, and once it's blocked, it's it's really going to bloom um, significantly. And I am really excited for the end result on this. Um, but yeah, it's it's intense. I'm up to like 400 and something stitches on each row. And of course it's brioche, so you are doubling all your rows. Um, yeah, it's not for the faint of heart. It's a, it's a laborious project for sure. But like I said, I think the end result is going to be gorgeous. Obviously I'm like in a, in a purple kick right now. Got my purple cow, my purple hats, my purple shrug. So that's actually, you know, it's a lot of work, about a month of work. So yeah, I'm, I'm so close. I'm almost done with the sleeve shaping, I think is what this section is called. Um, but yeah, again, her pattern is beautifully written. Um, she has, um, so you do, you do several rounds of a series of rows um, in each section and she has stitch counts at the end of each round, which is awesome. There have been a number of times, so when I started this was like kind of around the same time as all of the craziness started with my family stuff. And I was really not in a good place to like be able to pay attention. I should have just stuck with my, um, my sweater, my Sapilla sweater. Um, and I was making mistakes right and left, so I was very grateful that Suzanne included the um, those stitch counts so that I could, you know, see what sections were missing stitches or had too many and then accommodate on the next go round. So um, this thing, oh, another thing, <laughs> my stupid cat. You can, really can't even see it or tell. Um, but he, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, the day, the day before, oh no, now I'm all tangled up. Which side is it? He decided to help me. Oh, not this side. I'm actually just yarn everywhere now. Um, he decided to help me. I don't think this is really even going to show up, which is good. It means I was able to kind of fix it. Um, but there's like a giant hole here. I just tied a knot because he literally chewed several holes into this. Um, and then cut a line here. So I'll, I, I'll have to just snip those once. It, they're woven in already, so I'll just snip them when I'm done blocking it. But there were several pieces like loose and he, he likes to snip my working yarn. I'm, I'm fairly used to that. By now I should know to just put stuff away. But I had him in the sweater. So the, the by the way, the purpose of the sweater is to get him to calm the F down because he, like, for most of the morning will wander around the house meowing and, like, he likes to mess with the art and, and knock framed art like a skew and knock stuff off the table and he just drives me crazy. So I was hoping that a sweater might calm him down, but instead it apparently just pisses him off and um, he attacks my knitting. So I um, did take that one in stride though. He didn't freak out as much as I probably um, as was warranted. <laughs> Stupid cat. He's the worst. 
Oh, another work in progress. Sewing work in progress. I've got this fabric. It's a pinstripe fabric from my pen pal, Becky. Hi, Becky. I know you're watching. Um, and I am making myself a pinafore dress out of it. I'm using my own, um, own pattern-ish. This is how I draft patterns. I just, so A-line pinafore. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do bust darts and then do, it, it basically comes out to, there's, um, these are the pieces. Two of these, one of these, this is the front, straps, and an A-line skirt. This is the back. So what I'm, and I'm doing a, a double, so like a lined bodice. So, because it's kind of thin fabric, so, and I'll just wear like bicycle shorts underneath the skirt. But, um, so yeah, this is kind of what the shape is going to be. I took all my measurements and everything, uh, crossed in the back on the straps. But yeah, I have all the pieces cut out. Um, I have a bunch of these zippers that I got from Amazon. They're really not pretty, um, but they're kind of fun. And I just want to use what I have, so that'll be the zipper. Hi, Nobles. Can you say hi? And I have all my pieces cut. So it's pretty lightweight fabric, so it'll be really nice to wear in the summer. Um, yeah, I just got to whip that out. So that's um, a sewing work in progress that I've got going. Nobles, come here. Come here. What are you doing? I can't see her. She's off camera. I think she's going to mess something up. Oh, another thing I've been working on. What? Um, it's nail art. I mentioned in the last episode that um, this uh, February is letter mo, letter month. Um, the goal is to send 24 pieces of mail over the course of the 24 active U.S. Postal Service mail days. Um, there are 24 of them in February. Um, I, of course, maybe was able to maintain that for like a week and a half. But I did get a lot of mail out, and I did make a lot of fun envelopes. So um, just trying to use up some stickers I had and some papers I had and, and whatnot. So these are some of the envelopes I made with washi tape and stickers. So you can see there's a little label for the address and then stamp goes here, return address goes here. Oh, hi, nobody. There's nobles. Here's another one. Um, a lot of these stickers are from the dollar store and from Pip Sticks. Pip Sticks is based in San Luis Obispo, California. Oh, wait. Not this. It's a Pip Sticks there. Um, oh, I had some Lisa Frank stickers from the dollar store. Uh, and then this is all Pip Sticks here. And some washi tape. Um, Pip Sticks does a subscription club. These um, I think are also from the dollar store. They're those rub-on stickers. Um, oh, here's the rest of that rub-on sticker. So I, I always end up with a ton of random cards and things um, and I just like to decorate the envelopes. So and then these ones um, made from old calendar pages. I have like loose leaf stationery that I use for those. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot you can do. And it's like, you know, as long as there's a space for the address to be legible, you can decorate the crap out of your envelopes. It does not matter. The post office will send it. So did you get any mail out this month for Valentine's Day? Maybe? Um, that's, I'm, I'm glad that Letter Mo is in February because that's definitely a motivator to like send Valentines to friends and things. And that's mostly what I did and mostly why it all happened at the beginning of the month. All right. Oof. 
I do have some stash enhancement. Uh, my pen pal Becky, who I mentioned, sent me a package of goodies. Uh, here's some of the goodies. This is uh, a notebook which has some cute little sewing um, sewing pattern ladies. So what I think I'll do is cut out some of these pages and use it as stationery. So some good stationery paper, some little cute Christmas iron-on things. Be cute on a project bag. And then she sent me a bunch of um, wool felt, like wool felt, I believe, um, in various colors. It might just be felt felt. But she got these initially to make little monster dolls, and I'm kind of inspired to do the same, but who knows? We'll see. The cats actually would love these as hammock covers. And then some um, fun stripy denim. So this would make an awesome skirt or some tote bags or something. So thanks, Becky. She sent a few other goodies in there too, um, and a letter, of course. But uh, that's my stash enhancement. Um, I've been trying to be good and not do a lot of shopping. Um, so far, so good. Because I have, like, like everyone, we've got plenty of craft supplies and plenty of yarn. Plenty of fabric to keep us busy for who knows how long. For me, over a year with with everything I've got. So um, yeah, so I've been good. I'm hoping to get some more stuff for my birthday, um, but for specific projects I have. Um, speaking of which, uh, I am itching to start working with um, my Jacob's sheep wool or yarn. Um, I think it was the last episode. Um, I talked about how I got some wool yarn from um, a little farm in Maine um, from her Jacob sheep named Pierce. And I found the perfect pattern for it. I'm super excited to knit it. It's called the Bridget Cardigan and it is designed by Margaret Mills. Um, I really like this cardigan. It's got some nice shaping to it that I think will really complement my body shape. Um, and I've got plenty of yarn for it. And I'm, I'm really excited to try my hand at some cables on a sweater. Um, I just think it'll be super cozy and fun and squishy and nice. So that's, uh something that I hope to start soon. I have too many projects I hope to start soon. You know, I've got, I still have, um, I've got the yarn ready for my Maja card again. I've got the yarn ready for my beauty school sweater. Um, I've, I've got, I can see the yarn <laughs> over there for the Christmas stockings that I want to make for my mom. Um, I think that's it as far as stuff that I already have kitted up. I'm kind of just waiting till I finish one of these big fingering weight projects because um, it like I'm, I just am never going to get them done if I can't be monogamous with them for a little while. So, um, yeah, you know how it goes. Arbitrary knitting rules. Um, so, yeah, hopefully I'll get those projects done soon and get to start something new. <laughs> When knitting becomes a chore, you're doing something wrong. But I'm I'm so close. I'm so far. There's no reason to start over now. So uh, it'll happen. It'll get done. Uh, so to conclude, uh, what to watch next? Um, I am super behind on all of like what the cool kids are watching podcast wise. I just started the Grocery Girls. They're super fun. Uh, I think I'm on like episode seven or eight of what they felt like 200 now or something crazy. Um, but that's a great rabbit hole to go down. Um, if you're at the end of this podcast and you've caught up on all your other ones and you haven't watched the grocery girls, then go start that. <laughs> They're super fun. Um, I've also been, I've got a couple movie recommendations. Um, my husband and I are, pretty into horror and um, I love aliens so there's two there's one that's like 
true horror, which is excellent. It's called His House. Uh, it's on Netflix. Um, and it's about this couple from South Sudan who are refugees and they um, end up in England and they end up in a house that um, appears to be haunted. So it's, it's excellent. It's, um, I highly, highly recommend it. It's, um, it's got like all the perfect things of horror where, you know, there's, there's things in the walls, there's creepy children, there's, uh, yeah. And then it, it's got a good ending too. So, um, highly recommend that one. And then one that's, um, a lot more fun, a lighter fare, but also pretty gory at, at times is, um, Save Yourselves, which, um, I have to double check where that, I think it's on Amazon or Hulu. I think it's on Amazon. I should know. Anyway, I'll put that in the show notes. Um, but that one is has also stuck with me, and it's super fun. And that's about a couple from New York who decides to unplug for a week, and then an alien invasion happens, and like is happening, and they have no idea. And then when they find out, it's like too late to, to react, so they're just like figuring it out as they go. And it's it's super sweet and funny and um but also you know thriller e um and uh like i said it is a little gory at times but um that also has a, a kind of an unexpected ending and and that one is super full of optimism and hope and i, I would even say that his house despite the um the the darkness of the situation that they're in as refugees, where they came from, where they are, um, that one also ends with a lot of hope. Um, so yeah, highly recommend those two movies. Um, not like necessarily great to knit to. Um, like I think I might have started watching Save Yourselves Knitting and then eventually put my knitting down because I was too absorbed. <laughs> But <laughs> they're just good movies to watch. So uh, hopefully you enjoy those if you decide to watch them. And with that, I um, am going to bid you adieu. I hope that your March is uh, it goes well, starts well. I hope mine starts well. And um, yeah, you can find... Uh, you can find me on Instagram as Kira Knits Things. You can find the dumb cats on Instagram as the Bay Kitties. And um, yeah, that's about it. And I will talk to you all later. Bye.